Hey guys, welcome back to good old Lawrence County High School for another exciting episode of economics during the Corona days. Today we're going to call, talk about decision making because really economics is the science of choice and you have to make decisions whether you're going to do this or you're going to do that. So we're going to look at some things that may influence the decisions you make. The first thing we'll talk about is incentives. Incentives are things that make you act in a particular way, maybe do something that someone wants you to do or not do something that somebody wants you not to do. So there are factors that motivate a particular action. A lot of times whenever uh, people discuss incentives, they'll talk about this situation. We see this poor little donkey here and dangling in front of the donkey is a carrot, which is something that the donkey probably wants. But also you'll notice the rider has a stick to hit the donkey with, which is probably something the donkey does not want. So when we look at the stick and carrot method, we'll try to determine which one works best. And different people have different, uh, what's good for one person or motivates one person may not motivate another. Positive incentives. These are rewards given for a particular action. So if you do something that someone is wanting you to do, maybe they'll reward you with something that makes you happy, a pleasing stimulus like maybe a Dairy Queen milkshake. So if your parents tell you, if you will go clean your room, I'll get you a milkshake, and that may motivate some of you. Or maybe a trophy would make someone work harder, practice more in order to win and gain that trophy. Something that motivates me and probably a lot of other people would be money. A lot of people get out and do a lot of very hard work in order to get some cash. So these are all positive incentives. Let's look at negative incentives. These are punishments that are given for a particular action. So if you do something you're not supposed to do, then you will get some negative stimulus here. How many of you at some point in time, back in your elementary school days, had to stand facing the wall while your friends were out on the playground? That is definitely a negative incentive. So you shouldn't run in the hallways or you'll wind up like this. Or for some people, an F on a report card is a negative incentive. And just the idea of having to come home and show your parents you have an F on your report card is enough incentive to get you to do something. Probably the ultimate incentive for one of them in our society is jail. That is a definite negative incentive. That if you go out and break the laws and do things you're not supposed to do, then you will wind up here. So when we think about the carrot and the stick. The carrot would be the positive incentives because that's what the donkey wants. The negative incentives would include the stick and then all these bad things here that we do with each other. So there are lots of incentives out there. Remember when you used to do your work for your teacher, maybe second, third grade, and they would put a gold star on your paper and how good that made you feel? That was a positive incentive. If we ever come back to school, I'll put some gold stars on your paper. We'll move on and look at trade-offs. A trade-off is where you give up one thing in order to get something else. And we know that this is just part of living. We do this all the time. Economics is, it really studies trade-offs, but this is not a new concept. Opportunity cost. And I think opportunity cost was covered on some of the crash course, but I want to talk about it a little bit. We said that opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative. So these two things sort of go hand in hand. When I came up here to make this video, I looked through the closet at what shirt to wear and I pulled out a Lawrence County baseball shirt and I was gonna wear it. But I decided not to and I put it back up and I got the Blaine Wildcat shirt. There was an opportunity cost involved here. The opportunity cost of me wearing the Blaine Wildcat shirt is I could have had the Lawrence County baseball shirt on. But that was the trade-off. I decided I didn't want to do that. So I gave up the Lawrence County baseball shirt. I chose this one. Everything you do has an opportunity cost. You're watching this video right now. What could you be doing right now if you were watching a video? Maybe you could be out fishing. Maybe you could be making tater tots. Maybe you could be asleep. But you're watching this video right now. So that's the opportunity cost of you learning this economic concept right now is all those other things you could be doing, but you chose to do this. So once again, there's a trade-off. You could be asleep, you could be doing whatever. That's the opportunity cost of you learning right now. 
the worth of what you passed up in order to have the choice you made. So let me switch gears here to a new slideshow. As we continue on with uh, making economic decisions, one thing we need to consider is utility. Now when you see this word utility, it's used in a lot of different ways. Like there's utility belts, there's utilities like electricity and water and gas. You see sport utility vehicles, and we wonder what all this word means. For economics, here's what utility means. It's the amount of satisfaction received from consuming a good or service. Now think about that for a second. It's how much, how much satisfaction you get from purchasing something, whether it be a motorcycle or a tennis racket, or maybe from a service. Like maybe you go and you have your hair dyed purple or whatever color it is you want. So really, after you've paid the money, you have to ask yourself, was this really what I wanted? Am I really getting some satisfaction out of this or did I make a mistake and I shouldn't have done it and I should have spent my money on something else? Consumers, which is us, seek to maximize utility. We want to get the most bang for our buck. When we spend our money, it should be something that brings us some satisfaction. Utility, or I'm sorry, margin. When we look at economics, we look at margin quite a bit. So my question would be to you right now, and if you were in class, you could answer, what is a margin and where do you find a margin? And someone would raise their hand and they would say, on paper. And you're right, this red line right here is a margin. So it is just a, an edge or a, an ending point. So when we talk about economics, it is an edge or a border, but we say that we make decisions in economics on the margin or the edge. And let me give you the definition and then we'll try to make some sense out of it. Making decisions on the market means you decide whether to go to the next price level or buy one more of something. Think about this. If you go into McDonald's, you probably don't go in and say, give me seven cheeseburgers. But you may order two, and you sit there and you eat them, and you think, well, I'm really still not very full, so I'll go buy two more. And you eat those, and then you still think, I could probably eat a couple more. But you only eat one more. But look what you're doing. You're making those decisions in small increments. You're making them on the margin rather than just jumping all the way over here at the beginning. And that's usually what we do. So maybe if I go to buy a new truck and I go to the dealership and I see on the windshield it says it's $35,000. You know, I'm not gonna pay them $35,000 for it, so maybe I'll offer them over here $28,000. Well, they're not gonna take the $28,000, but then they'll counter off and say, well, okay, well maybe they'll get a little closer and say, we'll take $33,000 for it. And I'll say, well, maybe I'll give you 29,000. So we're working our way up to small increments where maybe we'll hit a point somewhere here about $31,000, $31,500, and everybody will be happy. <clears throat> so really, economic decisions aren't big decisions where you go, well, I only want to spend $28,000, but I'll go ahead and give you $35,000. And the dealer's not going to say, well, we wanted $35,000, but we'll go ahead and take $28,000. Things are made in small little increments, and that's what margin is when it comes to economics. So do you take the next step? Is it worth it to go one step further? Economic decisions, we say, are made on the margin. Few of them are all or nothing. Marginal benefit. Economists call this the increase in satisfaction from consuming one additional unit of a good or service. So if you have one Corvette, would it really make you that much happier to buy a second Corvette? How much benefit you get from buying one more of something. Then there's also marginal cost. It's the increase in cost from producing one additional unit of a good or service. Now you have to think like a producer. Let's say that you make picnic tables. You'll go to Lowe's and you'll buy enough lumber and nails and whatever else you need, screws, to build 10 picnic tables. And you take a couple days and you assemble those picnic tables. Well, your friends find out you've built these and they start buying them and you sell them all. And then your aunt calls up and says, well, I heard you've got picnic tables. I want to buy one from you. So now you've got to ask yourself, is it really worth it for me to build one more picnic table? Because I have to go back to Lowe's and buy all this lumber and screws and I'll probably just buy enough for 10. 
is it worth it to produce one more? And maybe you'll just sell that one to your aunt and you would be stuck with nine. So you have to make the decision. For the marginal cost, is it worth it to go ahead and move forward? The last thing we'll talk about today is the law of diminishing utility. Think about that. Diminishing, which means to go away, and utility is satisfaction. And what this law looks at is, at some point, consumer satisfaction will begin to drop after purchasing additional units of a good or service. So if you have that cheeseburger at McDonald's, and you buy one more, and you buy one more, and you buy one more, you eventually hit a point where you're not going to buy anymore. And you can say, well, yeah, because you're full, but that's what the law of diminishing utility shows us. If we keep buying and buying and buying, at some point you make the decision it's not worth it to buy one more. Maybe the Corvette example is better. You buy a Corvette and that's great, so you think if one's good, two would be even better, so you purchase a second one and that costs a lot of money, but now you've got two Corvettes. Do you need a third one? It would be cool to have one for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but then that's a whole lot of money. So at some point, it's just not worth it to buy one more or something. Think about this cat. How many hot dogs can a cat eat? Will a cat eat all these hot dogs? Will he eat just a few of them? Will he not eat any of them? Will he go to sleep? I don't know. So these are the things I want you to think about today. Just economic decisions and what affects us and makes us act a certain way or maybe not act a certain way. And whenever we make decisions, there's always a trade-off and there's always an opportunity cost involved. And when we are buying things, and we buy those things on the margin. Do we hit a point to where we bought enough or we've produced enough? Don't forget to take the quiz here at the bottom of the page and I hope you have a wonderful spring break and someday maybe we'll all see each other again.